Brother David with Jesus Ministries. So Jezebel is talked about in uh, Revelation chapter 2 by Jesus. Jesus, there are very few people mentioned more than one time, more than one time in the scriptures. David is mentioned multiple times. Moses, Elijah. People mentioned outside of their story. And when I say very few, please understand how many names, how many situations. Please, please understand how many names are in the Bible. There are like many. I don't even know how many. There are many names in the Bible. So, uh, uh, I mean, you want to share the videos. Praise God for those of you sharing the videos. Let me silence the thing. Okay, so fine. But how often does, how, how many people d does Jesus mention again? Himself. Like, he mentions Jonah. He mentions Solomon. He mentions the Queen of Sheba. When God decides to revisit someone, there's something he wants to ensure there's something he wants to make sure that we get. Especially if he wants to call someone else. Especially if he's not revisiting the individual per se. But he's placing that individual's identity onto another individual. He's superimposing. He's identifying somebody else by someone who existed before they did. So Jesus calls John the Baptist Elijah. God does in prophecy. Jesus does. Oh, that's Elijah right there. You know that's John. It's you know he's got the nature and calling of Elijah. There aren't very many people where uh, where that that happens to, to whom that happens. So Jezebel's a special figure. She's mentioned outside of her actual identity. Jesus doesn't mention Vashti from Esther. He doesn't mention Samson. He doesn't mention, he, mention, he doesn't mention, he mentions Jezebel. Never mentions Absalom again. He mentions Jezebel. Why is Jezebel such an such a problem the, I, the identity the attitude of Jezebel why is Jezebel such a problem because Jezebel unlike Vashti Vashti doesn't mind building her own adjacent if not smaller albeit smaller kingdom she doesn't mind carving out a kingdom within a kingdom. She's been given a certain amount of property and authority and she's content with that. She's content with that. So Vashti, the rebellious wife of Ahasuerus from Esther chapter 1. Okay, so that kind of answers the second question, which is why are the nations angry? What, what's going to anger the nations? So, question number one is, why is Jezebel of significance? Why does the Holy Ghost mention her? Why does Jesus bring her back up? It's because she's not content with what she has. So there's a lust. She wants control over other people. And she doesn't Regard the difference between right and wrong. Jezebel does not care about right and wrong. Jezebel is selfish and Jezebel wants to expand her influence over people. She wants to control other people. She doesn't care about right and wrong. So there are a combination of characteristics that a person can have 
that could cause them to be identified by the Lord Jesus Christ as Jezebel. One is when you don't care about right and wrong. Now, everybody cares about right and wrong to a degree. But there's a degree of compromise. There's a degree of stubbornness that an individual can have to where he is now, she is now, classified by the Spirit of the Lord as Jezebel. Jezebel just saw the judgment of God on her false prophets who prophesied for Baal. She just saw it and she still wanted Elijah's life. Uh, Jezebel didn't mind lying and getting others killed for to solve her husband's dilemma. So and she didn't care that she was destroying people's lives. She didn't care that her own life was negatively affected by her decisions. She just wanted control and her desire for control undermined her intention to discern right from wrong. When a person doesn't care whether their ideas are right or wrong, when a person doesn't care, when a person in critical areas and with frequency concerning matters cares more about how they see it, more about personal perspective, their personal perspective, than they do about the truth and is willing to it's one thing to say, I don't care what's true. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's rebellion. That's that's Vashti. That's Lucifer. That's Satan. Like, I don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do. Now, of course, Lucifer is a combination of all of it because he's the, he's the father of lies. So every lie, you can find it in him. But, you know, he's a murderer. He's a liar. He's a destroyer. All of that. But Jezebel, she she not only wants control. That's the mentality or the belief system that doesn't just want control or doesn't just want because God wants control but God is right and he created everything <laughs> Jezebel wants control in that she not only does she want to control things she doesn't care that her decisions are not God's will she doesn't care about God's will. She will use an individual's weaknesses against them to get her will. So Jezebel is a problem because that attitude or mentality wants to control people and will use their weaknesses against them. That's why the issue of her decorating her face with makeup and doing her hair. That's why her hair was so important and her makeup was so important when she tried to control Jehu's actions. Jehu was sent to the Lord to judge her. And so she decorated her face. She painted her face and then she did her hair so that Jehu's desire for women would be the basis for whether he was going to do the right thing or the wrong thing. She didn't want Jehu to judge the matter based on right and wrong. She wanted Jehu to judge the matter based on what she desired. That's what she wanted. She wanted Jehu to do what she wanted him to do, regardless of how that was going to affect him. As long as he obeyed her, that's all she cared about. So Jezebel, unlike Vashti, Vashti said, the king is having a party. He's free to have a party. But I have a group. I'm going to spend time with my group. I don't care what the king does. As long as I get to do what I want to do. And he called her, and then she rises. She, 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 she raised up and said, no. No, I'm not coming. What do you mean? I want you over here. 
No, I'm doing something over here. Okay, so that's rebellion and stubbornness. Uh, it's more stubbornness than rebellion, but it is rebellion because in all in all stubbornness there's rebellion, and in all rebellion there's stubbornness. So, but that was more like stubbornness. Rebellion is when you're trying to overthrow an individual's authority. So Jezebel is more rebellious in that she, there is an existing authority, and she wants to use her uh, seductive powers. She wants to use your emotions against you. She wants to use your emotions against you. She, she doesn't care that you're going to get in trouble with God. She doesn't care that things are going to be messed up in the end. So Jezebel is a major problem when we are referring to mentalities and systems of belief. Jezebel is a belief system. She was an individual. Yes. There, and, her, and her way of thinking is common in our day and age. So the Jezebel way of thinking is a common way of thinking. Many people think that way. And we talk about our sisters, talk about the women, as the primary carriers of that way because they are designed by God as more fragile and weaker. And they're desirable. So a man is subject to his emotions because when he's around something he wants. He's vulnerable. He's fragile. It's possible for a man to have the nature of Jezebel. We, you know, I've dealt with that. Men can have Jezebel. I know at least two men, at least two men that are that way. Um, yeah, too. I mean, this would have gotten saved them. But primarily, women have that because they are more likely to judge right and wrong based on how they feel. A man is more likely to judge right and wrong based on how he rationalizes a matter. So if a man can't rationalize something, He's not likely to determine whether he, uh, he's not likely to have an opinion on it. Like, I don't know. A man is more comfortable, seemingly, like withholding a perspective if he doesn't have a, if he can't understand something. Or maybe he'll reject it. Like, I don't understand it. I, I forget it. It must be wrong. I can't understand it. And if he can't think it through, then he might not respect it. But a woman, Ah, uh, I don't like it. Oh, it makes me feel this way. It makes me feel that way. Yeah, but you know, this is the truth right here. No, 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 but it makes me feel this way. And so, generally, a woman will have that belief system, that attitude structure. But all of us are either slaves of that, meaning we do what people who are governed by their emotions tell us to do because we're afraid, we're governed by our emotions. Or, we are the ones trying to dominate other people. And we will use anger. We'll use our image. We'll use our money. Hey, I have money. So yes, guys that have money, if you have money and you use your money to make yourself seem strong and you get people to do and to you, uh, one of the things that one of the brothers said was he was talking about a pastor and the pastor was talking about having millionaires who attend his church. And he said the danger with having millionaires attend your church is that oftentimes they try to control what the church does because they think that their contributions, their financial contributions, should determine the direction of the church. And since they're not the pastor, they feel like, well, I'm not the pastor, you are. But I have the money. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to control your position. It's not enough that I come here and hear the word of God. I've got ideas. And, I, and my money says you should do it. So if you want to see a guy with the nature of Jezebel, 
is the guy with the money or who has something to offer notable something that something that you know hey listen I have this so what what are you gonna do are you gonna do what I tell you to do if you don't you're not gonna get this money so a person that can threaten you with their stuff their money that person is ha has Jezebel I want it this way. My money says so. You got Jezebel. So you try to control people with money, you got Jezebel. If you try to control people with beauty, you got Jezebel. So basically, when an individual is unconcerned with right and wrong, then He's got the nature of Jezebel. She's got the nature of Jezebel. And when they use their seductive powers to control other people's actions, they've got Jezebel. And that's why that's a huge issue. Because in America, we've got money and we've got uh, physical beauty as a huge thing. We prioritize, you know, the man's got to have money and the woman's got to look pretty. So the spirit of Jezebel governs the nation. That's why witchcraft is is so rampant here, because people uh, judge matters based on what they have and how they look, not based on right and wrong. So the people who try to get money in order to control their world are attracting an attitude, a spirit of Jezebel. Run your life. I'm at Home Depot, so I can't finish this conversation. But uh, hopefully we'll get to talk before the day is out. And we'll answer that second question, which is why are the nations angry? Because they are. They're angry. Talk with them.